Thank you. So uh, my job is to convince you that this should always be managed uh, using an open technique. I do have a few disclosures. I am an acute care surgeon and a AAST member. My SAGES application is in, although after this afternoon, uh, it might, might be rejected. Uh, I trained when uh, the uh, plain foam was how you diagnosed small bowel obstruction, and I taught my attendings laparoscopy coming in from the community uh, to the academic center. And I actually have done a laparoscopic lysis of adhesions uh, for small bowel obstruction. I have no uh, relevant financial uh, or, uh, disclosures. I think it's important when we think about small bowel obstruction to think not just about the technique with which we are going to address the disease, but to think about the disease as, uh, in, in its entirety. And while I was also taught that you should never let the sun rise or set on a bowel obstruction, that is clearly not true anymore. And I think when we think about the difference in the patient populations that we are successfully able to do this, uh, treat this disease laparoscopically versus open, we really need to think about the disease as a spectrum. And what is clear is that if you take this disease and these patients and approach them in a protocolized manner that includes the use of gastrograph and contrast, we don't have to operate on nearly as many as we used to, and that this protocolized approach helps us treat the, treat the disease process and treat the, the, treat the patients appropriately and makes the technique maybe less of an issue. But I will argue, takes away some of the patients who are appropriately and, and uh, successfully treated laparoscopically. There's no question that we are addressing this disease laparoscopically. Uh, Dr. Davis has shown that from in the single digits in 2000 to somewhere between a quarter and a third of patients in 2013, th this disease is being approached laparoscopically. And if you uh, took this curve out another five years, it would still be less than 50%, uh, but it would certainly be higher than 28%. Uh, and if it was just this easy, I would not have accepted the invitation to come and try to convince you that it should always be addressed open. Um, because if it is this easy and you can complete it this way, the patients have shorter OR times. You've heard some of those data. A shorter length of stay, you've heard some of those data as well. They have less pain, similar to other laparoscopic procedures, and less morbidity. And the data, actually, one of my former partners, Ram Narula, looked at a NISQIP analysis, included um, uh, several thousand patients, and showed that the laparoscopic approach to small bowel obstruction has lower morbidity. And again, shorter length of stay, uh, less pain, but importantly, from the patient's perspective, perspective lower morbidity. Well, there's got to be a catch, right? Because I'm the one that's showing you these data. <clears throat> there were three groups. The, the largest group in this series was uh, addressed open. So it was an open management of uh, small bowel obstruction. And there were some that were addressed successfully laparoscopically and some that were converted to open. So about 30% of the total laparoscopic group uh, was converted to open. And in an appropriate intent to treat analysis, all of the laparoscopic groups should be taken together so that you can consider uh, the um, morbidity, the complication rate in the initial approach. However, they just decided to ignore that group, and the conclusions are based on successful open and successful laparoscopic uh, approaches, disregarding 30% of the population. And when you look at other data, those are the patients that actually have, have the trouble. And those are the patients when if you are talking about a safe approach that you need to always use, open is the uh, approach that should be used. The reasons for conversion are important, as you've heard. If conversion happens before a complication occurs, the subsequent in-hospital complication, infectious complications, prolonged obstruction, need for uh, operation, uh, ICU time, that complication rate is 20%. But if it is a reactive conversion, once the bowel has been injured, the complication rate for those patients 
uh, approaches 50%, which is significantly higher than if those patients had been approached initially using an open fashion. And as you've heard, it's not surgeons who have poor technical skills, heard and seen a demonstration of who have poor technical skills or poor judgment that have that reactive conversion. It is very, very difficult to predict which patients um, uh, are going to have trouble with an initial laparoscopic approach. So the best recent science was presented uh, at the American Surgical and uh, published in the Annals of Surgery last year. Uh, a Canadian study of over 8,000 patients showing that laparoscopic surgery for adhesive small bowel obstruction is associated with a higher risk of injury to the bowel. The laparoscopic approach was attempted in patients who were younger, had fewer comorbidities, was attempted in larger hospitals. Those hospitals were less likely to have a teaching designation, so these were not residents and fellows who were doing these cases. And the odds risk for an injury uh, requiring bowel repair or resection was 1.6 in the laparoscopic group uh, in an intent to treat analysis compared to the open approach. So if we look at practice management guidelines, uh, I've shown you uh, three studies. There are multiple very, very small studies, many of whom use historical controls, may or may not include the intent to treat analysis, but the practice management guidelines consider all of those data. The Eastern Association for the Surgery of Trauma Practice Management Guideline recommends laparoscopic treatment of small bowel obs obstruction as a viable alternative to open laparotomy in selected cases only. And I will remind you that the premise of this, this debate is that the approach needs to be always. When successful, uh, the laparoscopic approach is, may be associated with lower morbidity and a shorter, shorter length of stay. The other society, another society that has a practice management guideline is the World Society of Emergency Surgery. And their practice management guideline suggests that open surgery is the preferred method for the surgical treatment of strangulating acute small bowel obstruction and after failed conservative management. In highly selected patients, the laparoscopic approach can be attempted using an open access technique. They go on further to say uh, that this prediction uh, or selection can be um, patients with their first episode or an anticipated single band. It is very difficult to predict in whom uh, the, laparosco uh, the laparoscopic approach is going to be successful. Some have suggested younger patients, those in which on CT scan the small bowel is less than four centimeters, if the duration of symptoms is less than 24 hours, so the sun has set but not risen again, if it's a first episode, if they uh, have very few comorbidities. This is exactly the group in whom a protocolized approach using NG decompression, gastrographin, and following the patient uh, may obviate the need for an operation altogether. It, you actually can, are not able to predict on a um, population level when uh, you're going to encounter something like this and when you're going to encounter something like the previous uh, picture. So for that reason, uh, we do need to think about small bowel obstruction as a disease entity, not just a specific uh, technique to address the um, surgical complication. A protocolized approach to these patients is very important, and although we are, as a community, using laparoscopy much more often to, to address these patients, we're still unable to predict when we are going to be successful and the laparoscopic management of all obstructions is actually dangerous and should always, if we're going to use the, the word always, always be managed using an open approach. I would like to thank both Sages and the AAST for the privilege of the floor.